So without any further ado, Dr. Keith Crawford. Thank you. <coughs> so some of this, this is your first time with me in class. I'm going to treat this like a class. So I'm going to treat you. I'm going to do it. Uh, activity that I do with my kids on the first day of school, or first day of class. This is a Rubik's Cube, and this is what it's supposed to look like. I usually hand it to someone who doesn't know me because then we haven't set this up in advance, but we all know each other, so if you'll mess that up for me, that'd be awesome. So um, <coughs> here's my advanced <coughs> organizer to tell us where we're going. So I took enough education classes to know that you should tell your audience where you're going before you go. And this is Susan's outline that she emailed me, like, what I'm supposed to talk about. So <coughs> I've, been to mo <coughs> I've been to a lot of these forums. Well, not a lot. But I've watched every single one on video. So I'm definitely appreciative of technology for video in them. I've listened to a couple of them as I was driving to basketball games last year during the play. Get radio out in the middle of West Texas. I almost accidentally worked it, but then I did. Okay, good. That would have just ruined the whole point if you'd accidentally worked it. So I know that. I figured that was uh, sarcastic. I recognize it because it's the Rogers second language. Um, <coughs> so, um, like I said, I've watched, <coughs> I've either been to them or I've watched every single one that we've had because um, I want to know more about my colleagues besides just what department they teach in. I'd like to know, you know, where they came from and all that stuff. So, and hopefully you're here for that same sort of reason. So, I've got to stop and think for just a second. Let's so have to switch. So, um, this type of lecture and presentation is foreign to me because I don't do PowerPoint in my classroom because I teach math and we just make up problems as we go, or the kids ask me for a problem out of the homework, it's hard to have that typed up before. So um, the last time I did a presentation like this, didn't go as planned. Um, it was my dissertation defense. And so um, <laughs> hopefully this one will go better than my dissertation defense. But, um, and we'll get to that details later. Um, Okay, so this should be my parents on their wedding day, August, you're welcome, Mother, August, <laughs> August the 26th, 1955, and if I've done my math correctly, Mom was about to turn 20 in five days, uh -huh. and Dad had just turned 19, uh -huh. okay. so the people on the outside were crazy letting these babies get married. Exactly. They didn't love them. No, they, kicked, they needed them out of the house for someone else to take care of them. <laughs> so this is mom's parents, Baba and Papa, uh -huh. and this is dad's mom, Baba. Um, dad's, dad's dad died when dad was roughly 12 or so uh, from a heart attack and phlebitis. He, had, he was an electrician for Dallas Power and Light, and he had gotten phlebitis in his legs, and the doctor told him he was a pole climber and the doctor told him not to climb poles anymore so he was on the ground supervising but then one of his um, workers did made a mistake at the top of the pole and was electrocuting himself so he went up the pole to get his worker and he came down that's what took him out um, <coughs> they grew up <coughs> in the south <coughs> Oak Cliff neighborhood of Dallas um, like I said, dad's dad was an electrician. Mom's dad was a plumber. Um, <coughs> I, didn't <coughs> I didn't realize I was first generation when I came to college until flight plan showed up on campus. <laughs> and they were talking about first generation, that your parent, neither one of your parents graduated from college. I was like, I was first generation and didn't know it. Because at our house, you went to college. It was just assumed. I mean, it wasn't preached at us, but it was just assumed that you went to college. So um, this is a lovely picture from 1973 or so. Um, this is mom and dad's four children. Yes. You can tell I was, I've been a slave to fashion for a long time. <laughs> um, I'm now noticing that I had it buttoned all the way to the top. That's always cute. 
Um, my sister Rhonda was, um, she's an alumni of LCC and LCU. She um, attended both. Undergraduate uh, was still LCC and then she came back and got her BSN in nursing. <coughs> and I'm not thinking, so uh, let me stop and think for just a second. There's a point to this. Am I, I go over the syllabus in my class and I'm fixing it. And in my class, I fix it like two or three times while I'm going over the syllabus and call and roll for the first time. I'm just going to do it with y'all once because y'all are all advanced college professors and will oh, yeah. know what we're doing. This is my original Rubik's Cube that I bought in the eighth grade from Kmart. That's now where um, Academy is. So I fixed it. And like I said, I usually hand it to two more students. Yeah, they clap too. Thank you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I usually hand it to another student and mix it up. And then I fix it a second time. And I hand it to a third one. And I fix it a third time. And then I mix it up and ask the question, OK, who can fix the Rubik's Cube now? And only if they knew how coming in does anyone ever ask. And I ask them, did you learn just now in class or did you know coming in beforehand? And if they're honest, they're like, I already knew. But most of them don't learn it by watching me do three examples. Mm -hmm. And so I make the point, you just watched me work out three full-blown examples in class and you didn't learn how to do it? Mm -hmm. Huh, I wonder what that says about math. <laughs> You're not going to learn it by just watching me work examples. You have to go home, get your hands on it, and do the homework. Mm -hmm. So there's the point. So, um, like I said, Rhonda's an alumni of Lovett Christian. Her husband, Brian's an alumni. Their three children, Adam, Heather, and Jennifer, all alumni. Heather's husband, Cool Josh, is an alumni. Because we had two Joshes at one point. Oh. Heather was married or dating Cool Josh. And Jennifer was dating not other Josh. <laughs> not, not, cool cool, Josh. not Cool Josh, because Cool Josh had given our children these dumb Hulk gloves that smash together <laughs> that make all this lovely noise. So but he is actually cool. So. He is cool. So it, it, it lines up nicely. Um, <laughs> Byron obviously is still in the room. And you know what he's doing? Like he used to be. He used to be a chemist that did music, but now he's a musician that teaches chemistry. He graduated from LCC along with his wife, Karen, their children, Kai and Clissa, and Karen. Common Clissa's spouses, Whitney and Brian. And then there's Chris, who um, is three in this picture. And um, we spell that with a K because before we got Chris, um, there, were two B, there were two R's in the family, Richard and Rhonda. There were two B's, Barbara and Byron. And there was Keith with a K by himself. And there's eight years between Byron and myself. Mm -hmm. Mom and Dad got married. Two years later, they had Rhonda. Two years after that, they had Byron. Eight years later, they were blessed with their best child. <laughs> um, and their well, yeah. <laughs> and then um, we adopted Chris so that I would have someone to beat up, I mean, to grow up with. And so how we got Chris is Byron's story that he usually tells in a chapel at some point. So here. Chris is an alumni of LCU along with his wife Laura and Chris and Laura have two children, Amy and Canton. <coughs> All right, so this is supposed to be about me, so enough about my siblings. <laughs> so um, I went to Lubbock Christian School from the first grade until I graduated from college, basically. <laughs> um, the Rogers Crawfords, um, Rhonda is now Rhonda Crawford, but Mom and Dad's family, directly from Richard and Barbara, we have had someone enrolled at Lubbock Christian School from 1971 until today. We continue that today. So um, we'll see what happens in four and a half years. Only four and a half years. <laughs> yes. 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 Kelly doesn't want to talk about it. <laughs> so here's my senior picture that I scanned from the annual. Look at that picture. Right. I mean, that is Cadison to a T. So, I mean, genetics are hard to fight, child. Um, I had hair back then, which I don't miss. 
Um, I don't. I was truly blessed by going to Lubbock Christian. I had spectacular teachers, and I think that's part of why I do what I do. I mean, I can name them all. I mean, we were talking about, you know, Mrs. Haggard and the prologue to the Canterbury Tales that we can all still recite because she pounded it into us. But one that April out the shower suta, the March had pierced to the Ruta. He's a product of Haggard. Not just his last name. Um, but like for my third grade teacher, I know how to spell arithmetic. And every stinking time I spell it, I have to say, a rat in the house may eat the ice cream. Thank you, Janet Plaster, who's also an alumni of LCC. Um, I had Keith Owen for my Algebra One teacher in high school and my world history teacher. And from what I can hear from my students, she's still as crazy as he ever was. So then um, I met Kelly. Oh, the obligatory awe oh, picture. <laughs> Kelly and I met when I was a freshman in high school and she was a junior <coughs> at church. Um, and that was in 1981. And so um, I hung out in Bugger for two years and she went through a few other people <laughs> before she realized what she was supposed to do. And um, I just waited patiently. It's all right. It takes some people longer. So then, November of 1983, we started dating seriously, but um, today that's where they're talking, I think is the terminology. We were going together back then. Um, now they're talking. So um, it was awesome to be a junior in high school dating a college freshman. Not so much from her side. So um, she was here as a freshman at LCC. I came four years later. And here's a lovely picture of us after a Master Follies performance. Yeah, I'm thrilled. Um, what I love about this picture, Mom has it hanging up in her office for some strange reason. She likes her children or something. But um, I love the watch that I have on. You can't tell it in this one. But it's a calculator watch, which was really cool back then. <laughs> for us, a math major, it always has to have his calculator with him. So that was awesome. Yeah. So then on December the 11th, 1987, some other parents let their babies get married, obviously following the pattern their parents had set for them. Right. I'm 20 and Kelly's 22. You know, that was the middle of my junior year at what was um, the newly minted Lubbock Christian University. It changed from Lubbock Christian College to Lubbock Christian University the fall of my junior year. So um, now our family, <laughs> We have um, Keaton in the orange. They're the bearded wonder. Um, he's 19. He's a freshman here at Lubbock Christian. Um, we pray he's doing as well in his classes as he is in his social aspect of college because we know he's got the social down. <laughs> I just hope that the academics is coming along, and it is, um, from what I can gather from him at least. Cadison's 14, and like I already mentioned, he's an eighth grader down at Lubbock Christian School, obviously in the red. And that means, hello, that's my senior picture. <laughs> I, when I scanned those, I was like, Cadison, you cannot deny who you come from. Um, we wear a lot of pink nowadays in our family. Um, Kelly was diagnosed with breast cancer on March the 1st of this year. At, she got the phone call while we were at the state tournament on Friday. So it was awesome because we didn't have time to dwell on it because we were too excited to watch the Eagles win the state championship. So um, she's doing awesome, as you can tell in the picture and in live. Um, I could tell you a lot of details about our cancer journey, but it wasn't on the advanced organizer, so I'll have to do it later. <laughs> that's not where I tell you where I was going. Um, I grew up at Sunset Church of Christ, which is, this is the only picture I could find nicely. Um, Mom took me to my first event when I was two weeks old. Something like that. You weren't Got there. deathly sick, and she, so still glad to be here. She still hates herself for that. Um, I was very blessed to have grown up there, um, even if Dad was the minister for quite a number of years, um, because that place brought in spiritual people left and right. I mean, to come to the school, I mean, I just drank from the well deeply. Um, 
Mom quotes a young Keith Rogers um, as saying on our summer trips with Dad, do we have to listen to Dad again? <laughs> um, it's not um, one, of my, one of my funniest stories with Dad being in the um, pulpit is I got called down one time from the pulpit. <laughs> we were in Tennessee on a, on a gospel meeting and dad's just preaching along and doesn't miss a heartbeat. He's like, this isn't what he quoted, but this is the way I tell the story. For God so loved the world, Keith, see me afterwards, that he gave his only begotten son. <laughs> and you know, you hear in John 3.16 or whatever he was, and you know what it's supposed to sound like, and all of a sudden, Keith, see me afterwards, you're like, oh, crud. <laughs> and so that was, all, that was good fun. Um, like I said, I got to see the country because our summers were filled with Dad holding gospel meetings all over the place. Um, I've been to Yosemite National Park with Dad. Been to Alabama. I don't remember the trip to the Dakotas. I was way too young. Um, but all sorts of things. Um, but Sunset's where Kelly and I met. A friend from uh, Coronado invited Kelly to come to church. And like they say, the rest is history. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> We currently worship at South Plains Church of Christ. Um, to be honest, when we came back to Lubbock, I didn't want to go back to Sunset because I didn't want to be known as Richard's son or Byron's brother. I wanted to kind of stand on my own. So that's why we're not there. Um, we've been there and we love it. Um, I jokingly, when people ask about where does all our family go to church, I'm like, well, the elders got together, and they could only have so many Rogers at one congregation, and so we had to go to South Plains because there was already too many at sunset. So, um, but currently, Kelly and I are directors of um, our church's summer camp, which is where this picture was taken. Camp Evergreen. Um, every week, one every summer, we take a hundred plus fourth through eighth graders to. We currently go to Pond Springs for a week and um, are the directors, but we take another hundred or so teenagers and adults with us to be the counselors, teachers, and the cleanup crew. So, um, so that's my current history. Um, what makes me tick? My family, math, video games, Batman, Lego, reading, sports watching, and coaching my children. Um, math, well, I'll start with the math, the family, the math, the video games, and the Lego are all just because um, I'm a created as a mathematician and I solve problems. I mean, that's what I do. And that's what, I mean, any mathematician, I don't, I tell my kids in class, I don't do drugs. I solve problems and I get the same high, I'm told. <laughs> I've never done drugs, so I don't think I um, So now my intellectual path, how did I get to where I am? And it's pretty much four things. In the fourth grade, I said, no, I'll just stay where I'm at. And then I told people, okay, three times. <laughs> so um, here is the fourth grade Keith Rogers, who pretty much dictated the entire intellectual path of all the other Keith Rogers to come after him. <laughs> Which, when um, Dr. Tippins was here at his luncheon, he it made me laugh. He quoted Catherine Ann Porter as have, saying, I have not much interest in anyone's personal history after the 10th year, not even my own. Whatever one was going to be was, well, was all prepared before that. So fourth grade Keith Rogers is 10 years old. And so he made the, he made the, only, the major decision. Um, there's the other, here we are, probably the same picture. Notice that we don't have a teacher pictured, and it's Mrs. Blank. Um, <laughs> That's, um, that's why I said I'll say We started that year with Mrs. Sue Bean as our teacher. Sue and Russell Bean goes to Sunset. But Sue was our teacher. She, got, she was either started the year pregnant or got pregnant with their youngest and got put to bed with her pregnancy. And so after that, we had this whole string of um, substitute teachers until they could find a permanent replacement. So when Mrs. Bean got put to bed, I remember mom sent me down at the kitchen table on 40th Street and saying, Mrs. Bean's no longer going to be your teacher. Do you want to stay at Lubbock Christian or do you want to go to another school? And fourth grade Keith said, I'll just stay here. I'll just stay put. And like I said, the rest is history. Um, 
And I credit this as really the only academic decision that I made for myself to get to. <laughs> and you'll see, I mean, the rest of it is just, I said okay three times. <coughs> so, um, <laughs> I graduated from Lubbock. <laughs> that was the picture that I could find easily. Um, I graduated from Lubbock Christian School in May of 1985, and I don't remember <coughs> having a choice of going to college. I mean, all I, I went across the street, 20, I crossed 26th Street and came to Lubbock Christian College, because that's what Rogers did. Rogers, in our house, you went from Lubbock Christian School to Lubbock Christian College. I mean, I don't remember being accepted anywhere else or even applying anywhere else. I just came across the street. So. Um, I started at Lubbock Christian as an education major. I was going to specialize in math and history, and I wanted to coach. Because I knew that if you, were a, if you wanted to coach in the state of Texas, you have to teach history. It's an unwritten rule. <laughs> and I knew I was good at math, and I knew that if I could teach math, I would never need for a job my entire life. So that was the plan, and that's what I did for the first two semesters. Um, I was in trigonometry the second semester of my freshman year with Dr. David Peebles. So um, I'm turning in my final, and he turns to me and he says, you know, you should think about becoming a math major, going to graduate school, getting your doctorate. We hired one Rogers, we'll hire another Rogers. They had just hired Byron to start teaching fall of 1986. Peebles thought if the school was crazy enough to hire one of them, they'd be crazy enough to hire a second one. So I said, okay. <laughs> <coughs> walked, walked out of class to the registrar, changed my major. <laughs> because the man said to it, and I said, okay. So um, I am, I do not hate you, David. I am highly <coughs> indebted to you and David Joyner because they're the only two people I had for undergraduate mathematics at Lubbock Christian. I had two people, Joyner and Peebles. And um, I owe them a lot. It's really weird because now I'm their boss, so <laughs> it's fun, but it's weird. Um, while we were at Lubbock Christian College, University, um, God connected us with these two people, David and Tracy Hedick. These are two of our very close friends. Um, David and I were in club together. Tracy and I had lots of math classes together because she um, was a math education major in special ed. Um, they were the RAs for the quads. We used to own those quad buildings over there behind Lone Wolf. So they were the RAs. And they were already married when, we, when I got to school. And so, but we became instant friends. We spent way too many nights at their quad. Um, there's a whole other lunch story to tell about this, um, how God has intertwined our lives here at LCU um, when, I went, when I went to graduate school and since then. Um, it's been great fun because um, I've taught both of their children math classes. Brian, their oldest, Brian, is a chemistry major, so I've had him in class, and I've had Brandon, their youngest, in college algebra because he's a special ed major. Um, and Keaton's full name is David hyphen Keaton because he has four names, le really, but you have to hyphenate one of them because there's not enough, there's not four spaces on the birth certificate. <laughs> so his full name is David Keaton Price Rogers with the David being named after David Hedding, so. Oh, I thought it was me. No. <laughs> I, I, I could lie to you and tell you that it was you and Joyner, but. Um, so I'm nearing the end of my junior year, 1988. Um, Kelly and I had been married one semester. And Dr. Peebles stopped me in class one day and said if I thought about where I wanted to go to graduate school. I said no. He said, well. I went to the University of North Texas, had a good time, you would too. So I said, okay. <laughs> Filled out the paperwork. Um, I don't remember sending my scores to other schools, my GRE scores. I don't remember applying to other schools because people said go to North Texas. Okay. So that's the second okay. Um, so Kelly and I, um, I graduated from Lubbock Christian University in 1989. I dragged Kelly to Louisville August of that year. And I went to graduate school from 1989 to um, 1991. And um, I'll just tell you the way I tell most people. I know I'm not going to hell because I've already spent two years there. <laughs> <laughs> I 
those, and not the location and not the people at North Texas, but God really complimented Kelly and I during those two years. I mean, we were in the job of the two years. Like I said, I dragged Kelly to Louisville in August. Her dad had been diagnosed with cancer again in June. He'd been diagnosed eight years earlier and was only supposed to live six months that eight years earlier. So he had cancer in a different spot this time and had another six months to live. He died October of 1989. David and Tracy, God really um, did something great. They had gone to California where David's from for them to teach and then brought them back to Flower Mound, which is in the DFW area, for him to um, coach and teach. Basically, a week apart from when Kelly and I signed our apartment contract in Louisville, David calls me and says, we just signed a contract in Louisville to live. We were one block apart from each other. We ate more meals together than he should have. I mean, it was almost, I don't know what religion would live together like that, but it was almost, <laughs> we, were almost we should have just moved into the same apartment. We could have saved rent. Because seriously, we'd get home from work and the phone would ring and it'd be Tracy and she goes, we've got hamburger meat. Do you have noodles? And we're like, yes, we have spaghetti noodles. She's like, come over. <coughs> or vice versa. And we like, we'd call him like, we're having fajitas. Do you have avocado? And she's like, yeah. And we'd like, come over. So <coughs> David and Tracy were there. They got pregnant. Um, Tracy had a little girl um, February of 1990. Heather lived 10 days. She was, um, David and Tracy are much better people than I am because I would have had someone's license, but um, Heather was only 26 weeks gestation when the doctor let Tracy deliver her vaginally, crushing her skull, coming through the birth canal. She lived 10 days in ICU and died. That was February of 90. April of 90, <coughs> Kelly and I are watching television, and all of a sudden she can't see the bottom half of the screen out of her right eye, and so um, she'd gotten hit with a yellow metal Tonka truck at preschool a couple weeks earlier, and it caused a detached retina. And then November of 90, Kelly gets what we thought was the flu. Um, everybody had the flu then, kind of you know, normal. Um, the doctor we went to, she he came into the room, said, you know, what do you, you know, what are the symptoms? Blah blah. Oh, you have the flu. Here's your prescription. And walked out. Didn't even listen to her or anything. That was probably on a Monday, because Wednesday of that week, you woke me up in the middle of the night, could hardly breathe. Like, I need to go to the hospital. I was like, okay. So I took her to the hospital, and she had pneumonia, and stayed in the hospital for a week, four of those days in ICU for the more oxygen. So when we went to North Texas, the plan was for me to get my doctorate. I was going to stay there and just go straight through to my doctorate because that's what Byron had done at A&M. He didn't stop to get his master's, so I just follow people. I'm not really a leader. <laughs> um, God had other plans because after Kelly's two surgeries in 90, which <clears throat> this just makes me laugh in today's world, her detached retina in April and her pneumonia in November, well, remember four of those days are in ICU, our total medical bills that we owed as really poor, non, no insurance graduate students, $20,000. I mean, that's not even an hour in ICU in today's world. So just makes me laugh in 1990 to 2013, the difference. So at that point, about the end of 90, beginning of, well, the end of 90, Kelly and I decided that I needed a paycheck with a comma. <laughs> and so, um, in December of 90, Baylor had sent out a flyer, to, I'm sure, to all the graduate schools in the area asking for people with their master's to come teach for them fall of 91. So I thought, well, I could get done with my master's spring of 91 and go teach. So I immediately filled out the paperwork, mailed it off, never heard from them. So we came back from Christmas break, and an office mate and I were sitting around in the office talking <coughs> talking about what we were going to do when we graduated. She was sure getting her master's in May. And I said, well, did you send your stuff to Baylor? And she said, no. Why would they hire me? I'm like, why would they not? So I made her fill out the paperwork. And within two weeks, she had gotten a call back, an interview, and accepted the job. <laughs> so I figured that I had given her the job that was supposed to be mine. But so Kelly and I thought, OK, that door's closed. So um, we found out that West Texas College and Snyder was looking for a math teacher. So I went there and interviewed, 
got a nice no thank you letter. Um, <coughs> this whole time I'm bugging Dr. Estep, who's the dean. I'm like, is there a place to live a Christian? I don't want to come back. I want to come, you know, I'm telling him all throughout these years, I'm coming back. Just like we do now. I mean, we have to grow our own. So I was just one of the first ones to be grown our own. So, um, and there wasn't. So at the end of that, nearing the end of that spring of 91, we thought, okay, we'll just stay at North Texas. We'll struggle along. The debt collectors can keep calling, and we can keep telling them we don't have any money and that I'm in graduate school. So um, May of 91 rolls around, and I'm working in math lab during finals. And um, one of my professors, who I can see him, but I can't pull his name out. I never had him in class, but he was like the mentor over all the teaching assistants came down and said I had a phone call in his office. I'm like, okay. So I ran up to his office and it was Dr. Roth from Baylor. And another position had opened up at Baylor and they still had my paperwork and he was wondering if I was still available. And I almost screamed in the phone, yes, and I'll be there Monday, this was Friday, I said I'll be there Monday for an interview. He goes, great. So um, I went and we ended up going to Baylor. Um, but this is a picture at my graduation from North Texas of the four siblings, um, a little grown up from the 1973 picture. Um, That's about the same. Yeah. Um, the hat covers the less of my hair and the robe covers my fashion that I'm a slave to fashion. <laughs> I'm sure I have on something fun because it's graduation. Um, this picture, hang mom took this picture and this picture is hung in my office ever since then. I have a nice eight by 10 in it. Um, when I was at Baylor, I had quite a few students come in and say the following, which makes Byron and Rhonda really unhappy. You look an awful lot like your parents. <laughs> <laughs> he, he failed those students some big ones. <laughs> no, they got immediate passes. Um, the, other one that makes, the other one that makes me laugh hard is um, a, a couple of students would come in and go, I didn't know you were a twin. <laughs> And I'd say, yeah, mom's in the Guinness Book of World Records. And they go, really? I go, yeah, she has the longest labor of eight years in one week. <laughs> so, um, so we went to Baylor. And if North Texas was, you know, I said hell. It's really the wilderness trek where you're wandering for 40 years, wondering if you're ever going to get out. <laughs> Baylor was the promised land to us. It was awesome. Um, he didn't really try us like he tried Job in Waco. Um, we made lifelong friends there. Um, we grew more spiritually. We found a great church. But um, our plan was to come back here. That if or when we had children, and by that time when we got to Baylor, <coughs> after a year and a half or so, we were beginning to wonder if it was going to be if we ever had children. Um, I wanted to be close. I wanted them to be around their grandparents. That's one thing that I regret, that my grandparents lived in Dallas and I lived in Lubbock. And we saw them once or twice a year. So we knew that when we had children, we wanted to be back here. Plus, I wanted to be back at Lubbock Christian. And so, um, so again, at Baylor, I was, we were happy, we were blessed. But every time we came home, I made sure I talked to Gary and said, Dr. Eastup, anything. And for a year and a half, he said no. And then finally, Master Follies of 93, he was like, yes, David Joyner's leaving the math classroom to go teach computers and run the computers on campus, um, so I need another math guy. I'm like, I don't care how much it is, sign me up. <laughs> it was enough that we um, survived. So that's how I got back. So then the third OK, um, so I started back here in fall of 93, spring of 97. I decided it was time to go get my doctorate. Keaton was two and a half. And so I uh, figured we had, you know, we learned the, new, the kid routine. And so um, I made an appointment with the Tech's math department. So I went over there and talked to them. And the Reader's Digestion version is they wanted me to throw my master's from North Texas away, get a second master's in math from Tech, and then go get my doctorate. I politely said, let me go think about it and I'll get back to you. I hope they're not waiting to hear from me because I have yet to talk to them since. Um, my master's was only six years old. I mean, and they don't have an expiration date on them. I've looked. <laughs> so I don't know. It's just how tech's math department works. It's fine. It's how they work. 
you know, I'm not going to change them. So um, I came back to the science building where I was, where my office was at that point, and near tears, I told Byron, I told Peebles, I told ESEP, and I told Lynn Mason what Tex had said that, you know, we want you to start over. And Lynn turned to me and she said, well, you know, have you thought about going and getting a doctorate in some other field like instructional technology? Carl Mahan and myself have just finished those degrees. You can easily go do it. That's what she did. And I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, the first two okays, North Texas and um, North, oh, uh, change of my major and North Texas are, I don't regret those for a minute. I do regret this third okay sum because it's not, I settled for Leah. <laughs> I wanted Rachel, a degree in math. I knew. I was, I was going to come catch you up. <laughs> I, I, I love Rachel, the math, but I settled for Leah, um, instructional technology. Um, it's fine, but you can tell it's fine. It's not awesome. Like my, you know. um, but um, every once in a while I still think about Rachel. <laughs> but I've been told that if I go get Rachel, I'll have to get a new Kelly. <laughs> and so it, at some, but being the follower that I am, I chemist that teach, you know, that does music, that's not a musician that does chemistry. When Cassin gets to college, it won't happen. I'm not going to do it. I mean, I'll still be paying for my first doctorate, so I won't be able to afford the second one. And it's okay. Because um, it's okay because Leah um, eventually is loved by Israel and becomes the mother of Judah, where Jesus comes from. And Kelly keeps reminding me it's okay. And Karen Randolph has found a use for my terminal degree teaching digital media, so teaching my digital arts. So um, here we are, the family, in December of 2007. I finally get the robe with colors and the lot, but you lose the pockets. I miss the pockets. <laughs> if we want to be honest, I want to wear my master sleeve so I can put my Kleenexes and my Sudoku puzzles that you do during really boring um, graduations. <laughs> I've never done it. I just say You're that I do. You don't know it. I just time people. I time the deans to see who's the fastest to get through their kids. Because you got to do math, because it's math. Um, so we're supposed to talk a little bit about our dissertation. So like I said, um, the last time I did a PowerPoint presentation was at my dissertation defense. And um, in the instructional technology department at Tech, when I was there, there were only four people there. And you have to have four people on your committee. So you don't have a choice. I mean, you get to pick your chair, Dr. Moshak, and then, no, there was only three people in the department, because there was only three on my committee. Dr. Moshak, my chair, Dr. Crooks, and Dr. Price. And then I had my stats guy, Dr. Oliveras, and then at your defense, you have that guy from, that the graduate school says, you need somebody else. He never said a word, so. Um, Dr. Price and I were not on the best terms. I mean, everyone has someone, everyone tells the story like, someone on my committee I just didn't like. Well, before he got on my committee, I didn't really care for him. I mean, we got along, but it just wasn't getting along like other people. And so when it came time to defend my dissertation, he had retired like the previous semester or year. And so, but he was still on my committee because he was finishing out those commitments. Well, he had moved to Granbury, and I had told Kelly and the boys who were standing out in the hallway during my defense, I said, you know, pray that. God shuts Dr. Price's mouth like the lions in the lion's den. <laughs> it had worked some from for some friends of ours earlier on his dissertation events, and so I thought, we're going to try it. So we Skyped in Dr. Price from Granbury, and he's all good to go as we're setting up. As I stand up to start my defense, the internet in the entire building goes down. <laughs> for the hour of my defense, the internet was down. As soon as I'm done with my defense, God brings the internet back up. <laughs> This woman is faithful and God listens to her and my children. So um, I defended, went out in the hallway, sweated with Kelly and the boys. Come, uh, my chair comes and gets me and she goes, I'm the only one that signed. I'm like, oh, uh, wrong. Uh, yeah, they have some issues with you, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay. And it was all fixable. 
because I fixed it within a week because I defended it on Friday before the deadline on Friday. <laughs> and so I fixed them over the weekend, got them into those people, another Reader's Digest story, I finally ended up getting their signatures. Um, so um, I talk about my dissertation in probability statistics because it's, everyone's dissertation is usually full of statistics. And I can never remember the title. This is how much <laughs> this is Leah. I mean, I just, I like it, but I just don't remember the title. So the title is Computer Anxiety and Innovativeness as Predictors of Technology Integration. <laughs> yeah. I wish that I had added, I wish that I had added at the end in pre-service teachers because that's who I surveyed and that's um, who it really is addressed to, but you don't know that from the title, so it's not like you can go there and get help for your pre-service teachers and their technology integration. Um, I was working under Ecclesiastes 611 when I was writing my dissertation, which says, um, the more the words, the less the meaning, and how does that profit anyone? <laughs> <laughs> my dissertation is 69 pages. It's awesome, 104, 104 total with all the stuff you have to stick in the back, but 69, uh, well, there's only 95 numbered, real numbered pages, but you have the Roman numerals in front. So, um, so then the last thing, why I'm at LCU and why do I stay here? This picture is on the website, which was awesome, why LCU, which is why it was part of the question. I didn't add that. I just had to go copy and paste. Um, as you already, I've already told you and part of it, I mean, I'm paying this place, I'm paying this place back or what I got from here. Like I said, I went to Lebert Christian School from first grade until I graduated from this institution. First through fifth grade, I'm in Green Lawn, because that's where Lebert Christian had elementary school, was in the hallways of Green Lawn, my first through fifth grade year. My sixth grade year, I was on campus. Sixth grade, we were upstairs in the administration building with Mrs. Carolyn Rhodes, Ken's <laughs> wife. Um, and then seventh through twelfth, I'm down there at the south end. And so, um, I don't want Chief Perrin's job, but like Chief Perrin, I grew up on this campus. I mean, I ran all over this campus growing up. From first through fourth grade, we just lived down the street on 20th. I mean, a block past the Baldridge house. And so I would walk home by way of the bookstore and the cafeteria <laughs> and the sub. We would eventually get home, but, you know. Um, we, uh, first through sixth grade, at lunch, we went to the cafeteria to eat lunch. That's how we got, I mean, I took a lunch most of the time, but we went there to eat it. Um, I know this is where God wants me to be, or else he would, someone, he would send someone else my way, to which I would say, okay. okay. <laughs> um, and why do I stay here? Um, this is home. I mean, this is family. 19 of my family members are alumni including my mother. And so, I mean, it's my, it's, I've been called to be here. I mean, um, I've never found a place that I'd rather work better than LCU. It helps that I've never gone looking and no one's ever come calling. So, um, I'm gonna end with what I tell you, um, what I tell my students when I give a walk, um, is that if you don't learn any math from me this semester, <clears throat> learn this. My family is more important than my job. I can get a new job today, but I can't get a new family. And I, t and I usually get walks because it's a family obligation. I'm going to a doctor's appointment nowadays, or I'm gonna go watch my children play sports. And I don't care if you learn math, you should learn that your family is more important than your job. So, where did we go today? I told you my life history, I told you my intellectual path by LCU. So like I end classes, anyone have questions or comments? <laughs> I'm always first for this. I know. So, uh, if you were writing a dissertation in math, what would the title be? What would you study? Um, I would study most likely an area of math called um, topology. T O P O L O G Y. Um, for the non math people in the room, everyone but one, um, it basically studies properties that are the same no matter where you go. And the way I tell non-math people, take a, balloon, a deflated balloon and draw a square on it. 
So in this flat space, a square has four sides, four corners, an inside and an outside, and a certain area and a perimeter, blah, blah, blah. Blow the balloon up, and now you've got the square on a three-dimensional space. What's the same and what's changed? Well, it still has an inside and outside, but it no longer has four sides if you get it blown up enough. It's now more of a circle with some dents in it. The area has changed, the perimeter has changed, but that's... That's really baby, baby, baby topology. But I would do something there. I mean, people ask me all the time at chat days, like, what do you do with, you know, what do you write on? And, I'm, and I honestly tell them, I haven't been in graduate level math in so long, that I don't know what the questions are. You know, but you just go find, you know, you know what, you know what a dissertation is, you go find one little spot, do enough research, you know, copy enough people and add one little twist to it and there you go. <laughs> as, long as, you, as long as you cite them, it's just, it's not plagiarism. Anyone else? Yeah. 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 Oh okay, no. I have a question. Have you <laughs> okay, so going back to your Rachel Leah thing. Yes. Um, so let's just say, for whatever reason, Kelly wouldn't leave you if you decided to. <laughs> <laughs> no, she um, wouldn't. What I told would, her just need to get out of school. What would the <laughs> What would your ideal situation be? What would you do? If I could go back and say no to Lynn, and if I knew then what I know now, I would find an online math PhD in math somewhere and stay here. I mean, I got to stay here. But I would get a PhD from I don't care where, but online. Um, like I said, I Can might go talk online? back to tech so that I could be in face to face classes because that's how I learn best is face to face. Yeah. But I, you know, depending on if tech's changed or not. Have you looked for online math PHDs? I'm not allowed to yet. <laughs> well, the reason I asked is I actually did look and I didn't find any. I doubt if there are any. Yeah. I mean. There's probably some hybrid court, you know, hybrid degrees where you have to go every so often to class, like um, Matt Payton did for his dissertation from Pepperdine. But I really, you know, it's the one thing I regret. But it'll probably, I'll probably take it to the grave. But you wouldn't go back and go ahead and redo your master's. Uh, I would not. Yeah. I mean, oh, you wouldn't go to tech and redo your master's and get your PhD in math. Or um, again, another Bible reference, God and I would have to wrestle and he would have to touch my hip. Because I use my, I mean, not that, going back to the justifications that we have to write for people, I mean, I have a master's in mathematics with no expiration date. It's been good for 22 years, and I think it'll be good for another 22 years. Why you don't see that at other institutions, I don't know. I mean... We don't, when people transfer in here, we don't make them redo their first if they're coming from South Plains. But that's just, that's what they do. So, yeah, I mean, I, I would love to have it. And if I could get it like that and with that much money, I would. But <laughs> it's going to take a whole lot longer work and another pile of money, which I don't have. So I'll be okay. Life will go on. Does Baylor do anything online? You know, we heard John Henderson from that there. there. Yeah. They were very student friendly. Toward him. I they know they, what, they do anything online. No, and they didn't have a doctorate in math while I was there. I would have just gone, I would have taught and taken those classes. Yeah, I knew they didn't have one yet. Oh. They had a master's. Henderson helped start the doctorate. Yeah. When I was at Baylor, we had, we had looked into me going to A&M, UT, or driving back to the Metroplex to work on my doctorate right after my master's. Um, that would have been a three hour total commute and we just said no. Because I mean, in Baylor you're 90 minutes away from A&M, University of Texas and the whole Metroplex. Mm -hmm. It's a great place to live because it's small but you can get to things like art shows and concerts when you are young and married and have a check with a comma and go have all that fun so well thanks Keith we appreciate it you're welcome it. thank you <laughs>